Hello everyone, welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. We are filming episodes at PDAC here in Toronto. We're going to be doing 14 episodes here on the trade show floor. And our first guest um, is a third time back on Crownsman. Um, we've done energy episodes uh, with Chelsea Kovacs. We've done mining episodes. So this is going to be the PDAC version. Um, SFC Energy, uh, Chelsea's Director of Business Development at SFC Energy. Chelsea, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Uh, yeah, and uh, thanks for making it. You uh, you had a little bit of a journey to get here. Yep. Travel these days is pretty interesting, to yeah. say the least. Well, uh, we're missing half our team because of a snowstorm that hit. Uh, I think you got in at, what, four in the morning? Four in the morning, yep. So it was an early morning, but that's okay. There's <laughs> coffee for that. This is, a way, this is a way to kick off a show. Absolutely. Um, okay, give us... Uh, Okay, I want to get first set up. SFC Energy is uh, is the Canadian arm, right? Is that right? And then SFC Energy Ag is the headquarters in Germany. Is that yep. kind of the right setup? Yeah, kind of. So SFC Energy is a global organization. Uh, we represent the Canadian or North American. Um, our business is growing at a rapid pace right mm -hmm. now. So we're actually getting ready to open up our own dedicated U.S. office, which is different than the last time I seen you. Right. Um, but yeah, we're operating as SFC Energy Canada right now. Previously, we were known as a company called Symart Controls. Right. Um, and so we're a part of an acquisition. Right. And then what is, the, I mean, we've, the audience sort of evolves every time you come back on, there's going to be new people watching. So can you give us sort of the snapshot for anybody who doesn't know SFC? Yeah, absolutely. So SFC Energy is the manufacturer of fuel cell technology. They're doing mobile and stationary units and they're, um, I would say that they're leading fuel cell technology. We're one of the only profitable fuel cell companies in the world. I like that you said profitable. Yes, that's a big I, deal. <laughs> it is a big deal. Yeah. Some companies actually get shy about say, talking about that sort of stuff. And it's yeah. like, well, that's, well, that's why we're here. Absolutely. Um, I, so can you, so this e uh hydrogen e fuel cells. And so can you sort of give us a snapshot of what each of those are? And then we'll sort of get into the setup of them a little bit. Yeah. So if we look at SFC Energy from a global organization, there's really four streams of business that we're doing with fuel cells. Okay. So there's the methanol fuel cell that's going to be the industrial grade. Uh, there's also a consumer version, a military grade, and then there's a hydrogen fuel cell that we're getting ready to launch. Mm -hmm. So for us in Canada, we're more focused on the uh, EFOI methanol industrial grade fuel cell. And then we just launched actually earlier this week, the hydrogen fuel cell into the market. Oh, wow. Okay. So where, where would be j just general, what would be some examples of that just across industry wide? What would be some examples where they'd be applicable? Yep. So if I look at the methanol based fuel cell, it's targeting a niche market. It's very low power applications. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be perfect for um, remote RTU applications, um, security and surveillance, repeater sites, really anything that's less than 2.5 kilowatts of continuous power. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we look over at the hydrogen fuel cell, that one starts at 2.5 kilowatts and scales up to 50. So that's going to be emergency backup systems on telecommunications. Right. Um, disaster relief communications. It's, it, I mean, there's a lot of different applications and I think we're just starting to scratch the surface and learn where that product's a fit. Cause there has been a lot of growth, right. Um, in, in as, as a company, didn't you just open up a, didn't you want to open up a facility in Toronto? Yeah, we're in hyper growth mode. So mm -hmm. last time we met, we were based out of Calgary. We had our office in Grand Prairie, Vancouver. Uh, we had Phil who's always been uh, stationed out of Montreal, um, but we grew the business set down in the U.S. to the point where we're opening up our U.S. entity that's going to cover strictly in the U.S. Um, and then in Canada, we just opened up an office in Toronto um, to support the fuel cell growth and then as well as our relationship with Schneider Electric. Let's talk about our heavy industry tour brought to you by Savannah Equipment, supplying mining equipment worldwide and Corporate Traveler Canada, helping companies travel the globe simpler, faster and easier. We are heading to events across North America, Africa and Australia and filming episodes on location. Email us at info at crownsman.com to be part of Crownsman's heavy industry world tour. North Isle's mission is to be Canada's leading sustainable resource company and is on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol NCX. North Isle owns the North Island Project, the most developable copper gold project in Canada. The North Island Project has compelling project economics, is near infrastructure, has tremendous exploration upside, and has leading edge in Indigenous engagement and support from all levels of government. 2023 could be the biggest year yet. Learn more by visiting northisle.ca or by calling them at 778-638-2515 or emailing them at info at northisle.ca. 
SafeSight has developed a suite of innovative technologies focused on step change improvements that impacts vertical mining, shaft measurement, underground mapping and survey, mine rescue, and emergency response underground. SafeSight solutions introduce new possibilities in approach and efficiency while keeping every site safer. SafeSight solutions deliver valuable data that can quickly be turned into actionable decision data that allows effective and safe operation. Digital guide alignment will reduce shaft maintenance costs. Underground mapping drone technology that removes shadows for 100% accurate reconciliation. And mine rescue drones that extend the reach and range of responders on surface and underground. Visit safesitexp.com for more info. The CIM 2023 Convention and Expo is coming to Montreal from April 30th to May 3rd. So join us in recognizing your peers at the annual CIM Awards Gala. This year is extra special because CIM is celebrating its 125th anniversary. There will be special programming and perks for exhibitors and attendees alike. Registration is now open and tickets sell out fast. So visit CIM.org to register now for short courses and explore sponsorship opportunities. Yeah, I was seeing some Schneider parts actually back here. What is, what is that uh, relationship? Yeah, so that's what's unique to SFC Canada. Um, we're a distributor for Schneider Electric and the remote operations line. So that's oh. instrumentation um, and measurement. And then there's going to be SCADA and telemetry. And those are products that we um, have an exclusive relationship. And we've been working with Schneider for 25 years. Oh, 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 the company's been, oh, so this is not a new relationship. With no, okay. so this was uh, when we were back at Symark Controls. We were the distributor for ABB and Schneider Electric. Right, I see. Yeah, and so why SFC ended up acquiring us, there's a couple different reasons, but they were trying to bring the fuel cell technology into Canada. Um, and because they're targeting a really niche market, mm -hmm. uh, when you look at a SCADA pack RTU, that's one of Schneider's, uh, that, that's one of our main products that we offer from Schneider. It's a very low power device that's being installed in the middle of nowhere and requires mm. a really reliable backup of power. I saw that. I was reading through your case studies on the website and it was like they people were having to come out like every month to change out and now you've you've got it to a point where it's on other systems yep they've updated so they're not coming out that takes way less time to actually change out the batteries and all lots i'm probably not saying technically right no that's okay but um i wanted to uh what was i going to ask you about oh like mining specific yeah what i mean obviously pdac is very focused on the mining side yep. um where where specific are you looking at that industry yeah, so I would say that there's two different streams that are really interesting for us in mining. The first one is going to be the fuel cell relationship, because as we know, um, mine sites are not located in convenient locations mm -hmm. where there's typical infrastructure. So it's a lot of really remote uh, applications um, in really harsh environments. So people need reliable power. Um, and that's where the fuel cell technology kind of shines with the mining industry. So we're doing a lot there already. Um, and again, I think there's a lot of growth there. You've, uh, I mean, you're in the you're in the business development side of it. Yeah. What um, what are conversations you're expecting to have? Let, let's say questions you're going to get today that that I probably should be asking but might not know to. What are some questions if a mine operator comes uh, to you in this booth? What are they going to be asking? Uh, they're probably going to ask me how we're generating power and what our emission footprint is. Uh, they're going to probably ask about our performance in harsh, cold weather. Um, they're probably going to ask us about life expectancy and just looking for that fit of where the fuel cell technology. Because everyone, when they're, when they're talking about the system, it's a really unique technology. People are excited about it. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to figure out, okay, I have an application. Where does this fit? So... Um, it's probably going to be a lot of dialogue back and forth, just understanding what's their role um, and, and what's the scope that they're responsible for at a mine site. Um, and then we'll, we'll figure out where the fuel cell. The, the cold in. weather, the cold weather side of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of these mines are, I, I just got back from, I was traveling around Quebec and yeah. I mean, it's, there's some intense and that's not even, that's not even intense for Canada. Yeah. It gets way crazier than that. Um, how do they operate in those in those environments? Yeah, so good question. So I guess what I should do is I should maybe back it up and explain a little bit about mm -hmm. how a methanol fuel cell works. Um, so what a fuel cell is doing is it's basically producing power through a chemical reaction. So energy in on the methanol fuel cell is obviously going to be methanol. Energy out is DC power, a little bit of waste heat, and a little bit of water vapor. 
Um, so what the fuel cell is doing is it's, you can think about it as a smart battery charger. Mm -hmm. You're going to put it with batteries. It's going to start and stop based on the voltage coming off of the batteries. Um, and when it's performing in an extremely cold location, it's got internal thermostats. And so it's looking at itself. And so it's always self heating. So it will run antifreeze mode and protect itself. If it senses that, Mm. Hey, it's a sunny day, solar panels that are in my system are keeping my batteries at float voltage. Isn't saying turn the e-foil on, but I'm getting cold. Um, it's designed to protect itself in extreme cold weather. Are these are these customized? Like I, I noticed the I was on your website seeing the uh, we'll bring a picture of it up, but the yeah. uh, like the actual casings you're putting everything are these customized depending on the environment? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got off the shelf. I mean, there's three different packages that we offer. There's going to be, and it depends on the need. So do you need this to be a mobile solution? So um, a Pelican case, for example. What would be an example of an application where you need? Uh, the mobile solution so if we wanted to look at like a trailer application which is going to be the most common in the mining sector um on an open pit mine there's going to be the haul trucks that are autonomously moving around and they could potentially go into an area where their operations is blind they can't see the haul truck and they can't speak to they're not collecting data anymore Mm -hmm. and they've they've lost it so then what you would do is you would move our fuel cell trailer around the surface of that mine for uptime at all times. I see. Okay. Yeah. And then what would the second one is what? So then there's uh, stationary cabinets as well. And so the cabinets are going to be more long-term deployments. An example in the mining sector is going to be slope stability monitoring. We'll do a lot of geological huts again around an open pit mine where they've just got equipment that's monitoring uh, the edges of the mine just to make sure that no one's at risk inside. And, and those systems typically live at that site. And so mm-hmm. we'll provide it in a, in a cabinet or sometimes a building um, with the ability to, to customize as well. Um, and then the third? There's a Pelican case. So Pelican case is a really small temporary um, solution. Uh, just an interesting project, just going back to your question that you had about how it performs in the cold weather. Um, we did a project um, with a group that's uh, that's monitoring climate change uh, in the glaciers. So um, we have a system installed in, in the Arctic Circle. That's really, yeah, that's literally as good as it gets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, yeah, it, it's, it's, I would say for the Pelican case, it's going to be more short term applications. And then it depends on the equipment that you have. Like those guys couldn't bring a truck around to move a trailer. So yeah. um, a Pelican case is that fit. So it's really application specific. Hexagon's technology and solutions enable stakeholders across the mining industry to make better decisions faster. Get smarter, integrated cloudware, sensor software solutions, and infield apps that connect mines to boardrooms in real time. Hexagon offers safer, autonomous, more sustainable open pit and underground mining solutions spanning exploration and planning, safety, and operations. Visit hexagon.com forward slash mining or email info.min at hexagon.com today. Your trusted partner of choice, Best Tech Engineering, is excited to announce that they have acquired Spencer Engineering. This allows Best Tech to add mine hoist expertise to their existing suite of services, including mining, power, electrical, instrumentation and automation, mechanical and structural divisions. This diversification will offer clients the highest level of service and value for their projects. Don't miss out on this exciting new chapter of engineering excellence. Reach out today at bestech at bestech.com to learn how Best Tech can help you. PowerZone carries a massive inventory of pumps, engines, generators, and compressors. However, they don't stop there. They combine imagination with world-class engineering. They detail the entire process to every customer. Their pump package testing facility ensures your equipment is landing on-site, ready to work. That is PowerZone. Start with inventory. Develop with imagination. Deliver with integrity. And it's all at PowerZone.com. That is PowerZone. It almost seems like it goes without saying, but we should touch on it. The The environmental footprint, you guys said that's going to be one of the questions. I mean, obviously, mines, I mean, I, I do so many of these interviews, and that's just, um, I actually have to try to dial it back on some of the conversations because it could be, it could basically be the whole interview on every single episode. Absolutely. Um, so, but in your case, the the footprint is is so minimal is yeah that- yeah and so typically what we're doing is we're displacing emission producing equipment so generators that are out in mine sites right now they're producing power through um a combustion process so that's burning fuel and that's producing harmful emissions mm-hmm. what we're doing is we're producing power through a chemical reaction so there's no harmful emissions if i look at the methanol fuel cell it's a small amount of co2 that's produced during operation and mm-hmm. it's no more than me and you breathing and then if I look at the hydrogen fuel cell, there's zero emission footprint. 
it's amazing. So when you look at these mine companies that are being challenged with, hey, we need to manage our ESG portfolio, we need to reduce our emissions, the fuel cell is a really simple fit mm -hmm. from an operation perspective just because of the performance and the reliability. But then on the emission side as well, there's potential to generate carbon offset credits um, and just show that delta from, hey, this is what we would have typically used and this is the amount of uh, emissions we would have produced. But now that we're using fuel cell technology, we were able to reduce our emissions by 99%. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply that to, I took X amount of cars off the road. Like yeah. it really just depends on, on how you want to communicate those facts back. Does the, um, are you competing are you competing against other people in your space? Uh, obviously, you're always competing against them. But are you still competing against those combustion engine type generators? Um, are you like, will, will mine operators come up here at this event? And that's what they've got in place still or absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, it's a bit of a different conversation too, because then we get into more of the details about how are you using that combustion engine? Because usually um, they're high power. That's what I was going to say. It seems like it's overkill for a lot of these applications. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So then you get it. That, that's where it gets fun because then I can say, okay, this is a repeater site. So you're using AC equipment can we look at DC equipment so that we can reduce your power footprint, look mm -hmm. at efficiency and make the fuel cell a little bit more of an attractive offer? So um, there's definitely a lot more thought that goes into it. It's not a direct, hey, I'm moving away from this gen set and I'm putting in a fuel cell. Um, we always need to size it and make sure that it's appropriate mm -hmm. for that application. So, um, but yeah, we are we are displacing gen sets. You, you, do, you do really well in the energy space, yes. um, like in Alberta, for example. Absolutely. Um, so why why do why the initial focus on there was it just because of like monitoring systems and things like remote monitoring systems? Why, why did SFC do so well and then move more aggressively into the mining space? Now? Yeah, th that's a great question, and I would say it's because of who we used to be at Simart Controls. Mm -hmm. So we were around for fifty years, and we were primarily servicing the oil and gas industry. And then it's the Schneider Electric relationship as well. Like when you look at a SCADA pack, right. That's twelve watts of power. Typically, people are using solar in Alberta and you've got an oil and gas application, um, having uptime is the most important thing that you can have. And so solar wouldn't work in conditions like what we've experienced flying into. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so it just, the fuel cell was such a natural fit and that was where our market was. So we came in and, and dominated market share in oil and gas and then, um, started expanding our relationships into mining. I mean, we're, we also rep ABB in Western Canada um, we do a lot of drives and motor control projects into the mining industry there as well. So it was just a natural transition. Um, you, you and I off camera talked a little bit about like sales strategies and things like that. What do you see? Um, what is the company's edge? I mean, you said profitable. That that makes a big difference because then you can afford to invest in, in things easier. Yeah. Um, so obviously that. But what do you think just as a, you know, just as a company culture, what do you think is giving you that edge? Um, and accelerating that rapid growth, uh, of course, underpinned by the quality of the product. But I'm, yep. I'm more mean from a culture. Yeah, standpoint. no, I love that question. Um, I would say it's because we're focusing on solving a problem. And then when you look at the breadth of our knowledge and the, the products that are in our portfolio, we're providing full turnkey systems. So I'm not selling you, hey, this is just your fuel cell that's going to power your system. Right. I'm coming back saying, hey, What's the architecture of the layout of this project that you're doing? What are all of the systems here? Could I maybe offer this cabinet here? Do you need a SCADA pack in here? And what are your connected devices? So it's just, we're more of consultants right. that are solving an energy problem right. and making it easy for our clients to install our systems. Yeah. And, and reducing their, their footprint, which every, every operator here is that that's pretty much 90% of what they're looking for. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think you're going to have a good show. Yeah. Um, Chelsea, thank you for doing this. Uh, I think we did the first episode you did with Crownsman, and then I think you did it with Chad. And, yep. so it's, and this is our first time even meeting in person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's good to see you. Uh, thanks Likewise. for coming back on, and hopefully it won't be too long before we do it again. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we are going to be doing – you're going to be seeing a lot of episodes coming at you from PDAC um, covering – we've got a lot of different technologies we're doing at the show, so keep watching. And thank you to all our sponsors, and we will see you on the next episode of Mining Now.